Okay, this sports sample project for Unreal Engine's motion design tools has a secret superpower that makes it amazing for live broadcast graphics. And it's not the 3D graphics, it's not the cloners, at least not directly. Let me show you. If I take this rundown, this is the wipes rundown. It has a bunch of pages that do different quick wipes to cover the screen. And if I look at just these last ones, this is pages 9 through 13, and I'll start with page 9 and preview that in. Okay, sure enough, we have the 3D graphics that we would expect to see from Unreal Engine. The secret power of this, though, is I hit preview next, I get to the next page, it's the same graphic with a whole different team, a different 3D model logo, a different set of colors, and there's another team, and another team, and another team. It's this ability to take a single template level and completely change it to the color schemes and 3D models desired by a specific situation that makes this so powerful. So let's take a look at exactly how this works. So starting out here in the rundown, what I'm going to do is right click on one of these pages that I'm interested in and I can choose edit scene. This is going to open up that specific level right here in the editor and I don't even have to hunt around for it. So if we take a look at this particular playback, I'm going to mute the audio and just hit play. And there we go. There's the graphics. And right now we're looking at this team called the hairs. And you can see that there is a graphic here painted on the back wall that's hairs. Uh, there's a hole being cut into that wall with a particular graphic pattern in the background. Of course, the color scheme is this green and white. And we also have this 3D logo go and it looks like that's a mesh let me just yeah, there it is team logo static mesh so we have a mesh for that logo now if we wanted to recreate this for another team you might think that we'd have to go through and manually change all of these but in fact all we need to do is go into remote control and change this code for the team so there's another team called the navigators so navi is the four letter code for that i hit enter and immediately this entire level changes its look around the needs of the navigators color scheme We've even changed the 3D mesh for the logo. So you can see that the background has changed. How this works is if I select this controller that we just changed the value on, you can see that it has several behaviors put together. Now, one of these is just a simple bind, and all that's doing is reporting here in our properties what value we have typed in here for the input. It's labeled debug, so I guess this is just a quick way to make sure that the value that we're typing in here is making its way out to the properties. But we have other properties that we're changing here, and you can see there's the 3D mesh, and that's going to be the 3D mesh that we see here in the logo. There's a wall pattern, that's that pattern we see in the background wall and then there is this texture that's used on the foreground wall so these three assets are actually being selected here by this one remote control and it's this path behavior that's doing the selecting so if I select the first path what we see is that this is a texture it's an internal texture, so it's not out in the file system. It's built into the project. And the target property that this particular texture is going on to is the wall pattern. So right here is the wall pattern. This is a path in the content browser to the location of the texture that we see here on this back wall. And so that path is built from actually several of our remote control values. So what we're doing here is we have an RC input that is uh, actually typed directly in here. And so this is underscore team elements. So if we go to content browser and content, sure enough, we have underscore team elements as a folder. Looking further, RC input two is set to soccer so the first folder is team elements the second folder underneath that should be soccer so if we go to content browser go into team elements sure enough we have soccer looking further into this remote control we've got controls number three and four upl and 3d leading down to where our location is now it looks like there's quite a few directories here so we've got two three four six and five these are just the ids for these different controllers and so let's see 
3 is UPL, 4 is 3D, 6 is wall patterns, and 5, where is 5? There it is, textures. So let's go ahead and take a look. Content browser, soccer, UPL, 3D, wall patterns, let's just double check, wall patterns, yep, and textures. And there are the actual textures that are used. And you can see that the texture names are set to these four letter codes for each team. So what's happening here in this path is Navi is actually the name of the asset to be picked. And then the rest of this path is where to find it in the project. All right, great. So we have this texture in hand. How do we apply it to the model that is the wall in the background? Well, let's take a look. So I will select the property itself. That's what's being changed by this right here, the wall pattern property. Double click that and that will select the actor in question. Not only selecting the actor, but drilling right down to the property that's being changed. And here it is, the texture for Navi. So what's happening here is there's actually a special blueprint component added to this mesh that is taking in the texture value and it's exposing that to our remote control. So this button right here is active. That is what placed this property here into the remote control. I'm just going to collapse this a little bit. And we're using this in the context of a traditional material instance. So let's see, I think this is actually a dynamic material instance. So if I double click on this, we will have this dynamic material instance and it's getting its value here. And so in this case, we're using a traditional material instance dynamic and it looks like the team developed this custom blueprint in order to take a value from a remote control property and place it into a traditional material. So let's see, this is called BP Texture Parameter Setter. I think I saw, if I go to Content Browser, Content, yeah, sure enough, there is a folder for blueprints, and in there we have our BP Texture Parameter Setter. So that is what's set up there to use with traditional material instances. So we're assigning this texture to a texture parameter in that material instance, that texture parameter is pattern, and uh, we've got here it is that debug name with the uh, remote control exposed so that is one of these uh, that we're seeing so that we can just see again that this value is making its way into that blueprint so that must have been used for that debugging now this is a little bit special i probably wouldn't do this with a typical motion design setup i'd, I'd usually rather use material designer so let's take a look at a different example uh, and I think probably uses Material Designer. So I'm going to into Scenes, and there I'm going to scroll down to this Lower Thirds Team Versus. I'll double click that. I'm not going to save changes to what we've been looking at. And let's just take a quick look at what this is. All right, great. So I'm going to mute the audio, and we've got these two teams being displayed. They each have their own colors and some background patterns that are moving and everything. So let's just select the navigators for now. And when I selected this, I got a pattern top team. Now I think I'm getting the wrong. There we go. This is team bottom. All right. So we've got a, a main bottom and we've got a pattern bottom and we have a mask. So the mask must be giving us this rectangle shape and then we have the actual colors. So let's take a look at this pattern bottom and scroll down and sure enough, material designer. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit with material designer and take a look at this. Now this is the floating pattern. Let's take a look at the main one first. All right, there we go. So we've got this nice little gradient going on and you can see that here. We've got a dark green here behind the logo and it gets gradually brighter. And so if we look at the color of this, you can see we've got a primary color underlying the entire layer setup. And interestingly enough, the texture is a texture that has a color palette around the perimeter. So notice that here we have a texture as being the source for this layer. This isn't a texture, this is an edge color. So this particular layer selects this texture and it's pulling the bottom right color. So if we look at this texture, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and browse to it. You can see, double click, 
sure enough, um, oh, interesting. We don't see those frames. Let's deactivate the alpha channel, and there we are. So this color right here in the bottom right is what's being selected to fill this color value. So this color is being used as our base layer. Next, I'm going to not close that yet. Um, next, we have another layer that is also using edge color. And this time, this layer is using the top right. So sure enough, top right is a brighter shade. And that's what's being used here. And then it looks like we have some grunge laying on top of that. And of course, with this overlay color pulled from the top right, we have a gradient placed into the alpha channel so we get this gradient across the rectangle. So that's pretty cool. So this way, whenever the remote control here has the bottom team code applied, we are pulling this texture. And let's see where this texture is located. Again, this is team elements, soccer, UPL, 2D HQ, high quality, and Navi. So again, remote control and team bottom. And one of these paths is going to be pointing to up oh, bottom bar color. And sure enough, it is, you know, a path to where that pattern is located. Let me move this out of the way. So we've got 1210, 1211, 1212, and there it is, soccer UPL 2D HQ, and then it's the Navi asset. So that's how that's working for selecting that color. Now there was one other interesting thing. If we look at this pattern, the pattern's in motion. So it's continuously in motion. And this is in motion side to side. It looks like it's on a rectangle that's rotated 45 degrees. And so if we look at that, sure enough, it's rotated 45 degrees. What's making this move? Because if I open up my operator stack and go to animators, nothing there. So let's take a closer look. We'll go to emissive color, select this. Nothing happening here, but let's take a look at the alpha channel. One of these should be, ah, it's under opacity. So we have an opacity channel on, and sure enough, we're using a pattern like this, and there's a panner UV effect, right? So I can click effects. I can go to, uh, in this case, this is the color side, the RGB side, not the alpha, this is the color and that's being used for opacity. So if I go to color, it's not showing up here because it's already applied, is panner. If I select panner, you can see it has a speed of 1x. So that's what's moving this continuously. And then that's applied to overlay. If we look, take a look at this color, uh, again, we're choosing a color from that same uh, Navi logo with the color palette. This time it's just the left color. So if we uh, bring that in here, it, here's that left color being applied. So that's how that's working. Uh, I guess the one thing that uh, we haven't really covered here is that back on that previous level, there was a static mesh. So let's go take a look at how that was set up and Scrolling down, that was the wipe team A. Let's not save any changes here. And we'll go ahead and just uh, mute the audio and bring this up. So this static mesh, right? So let's expand. Here's the team logo. Here's this static mesh team logo details. There's the static mesh. In remote control, we have this exposed as this property. And sure enough, if we look here, one of these paths is going to be a static mesh and it'll point us directly at this particular one. So controller two, three, and four lead us to uh, the asset itself. So two is soccer, UPL, and 3D. So if we go here, content, team elements, soccer, UPL, 3D, and there's our 3D logos. So there you go. I mean, essentially, this is how the sports sample project makes the levels flexible as templates. So you can very quickly reconfigure them to be used with any color scheme, any set of textures and static meshes for each and every graphic. I hope this helps. Until next time, have fun.